In the previous lecture, we learned about how different transactions affect the accounting equation. We will now go more in depth into these transactions and learn how they affect different accounts and how to apply the rules of debit and credit in different situations. The accounts kept by a business depend upon the nature of its operation and the types of transactions it carries out. A business may hold numerous accounts which record and sort the different transactions that are conducted by the business. Before a business starts recording transactions, it sets up a chart of accounts in which different transactions are recorded. We earlier learned that these accounts can be classified as balance sheet or income statement accounts. Under balance sheet accounts, the key accounts are assets, liabilities and owner's equity. Under income statement accounts, the key accounts are revenue and gains and expenses and losses. Within each of these accounts, there will be several accounts for different items such as cash, inventory, machinery, etc. Let's take a brief look at these accounts. The three balance sheet accounts are shown on screen. As you can see, the common types of asset accounts include cash, accounts receivable, equipment, inventory and prepaid expenses. Note that these are just examples of asset accounts. The accounts receivable refer to the money that you expect to receive from other businesses or individuals. In reality, there will be many asset accounts. Common types of liability accounts include accounts payable, notes payable, unearned revenue, deferred taxes, long-term debt and so on. The accounts payable refer to the money that a business owes to other businesses or individuals. Notes payable is the money that a business promises to pay at a future date and the unearned revenue is the money received in advance. The common types of owner's equity accounts include capital and retained earnings. The capital account includes both the money invested by the owner and the money withdrawn for personal use. The retained earnings account represents the portion of net income retained by the business. The two income statement accounts are shown on screen. As you can see, within the revenue account, there is one main account for revenue. This is where the company's primary revenue is recorded. Apart from that, there can be other accounts for items such as dividend and interest earned, money earned from sale of assets, capital gains, etc. However, there will be many expense accounts representing different expenses incurred by the business. Examples include salary expenses, selling expenses, depreciation on assets, rent, interest paid, and so on. To record a transaction in the books of the business, the transaction is analyzed to determine the answers to four questions. The first question is, what is being exchanged? For example, a laptop is purchased for cash. The second question is, what accounts are affected? We need to know whether the account affected is an asset, a liability, or owner's equity. Within each of these categories, we need to determine the specific accounts that are affected. Once we know the accounts that are affected, we need to know which of these accounts are increasing or decreasing. Finally, we will determine whether these amounts are debits or credits and accordingly debit or credit the respective amounts. We will take a few transactions at Web Design Inc. and attempt to answer these questions. The first transaction we will look at is the purchase of the laptop. On June 5th, David purchased a new laptop for his work. The laptop cost him $800. First, we need to determine what items are exchanged. A transaction is defined as the sale or exchange of goods or services. In this transaction, a laptop is exchanged for cash. Both the laptop purchased and the cash are physical property of Web Design Inc. Let's now look at how the different accounts are affected. Liabilities. In this transaction, tangible items are exchanged which does not affect any of the liability accounts. Owner's equity. 
since the owner has not withdrawn any cash nor invested any money in the business the owner's equity accounts are also not affected assets in this transaction both the laptop and cash are assets of the business therefore the accounts under the asset category are affected within assets the two accounts affected are cash and laptop accounts income the purchase of laptop does not lead to any income for the business the laptop may be used to generate income but the laptop itself doesn't create any income therefore income accounts are also not affected expenses this is also not an expense because we receive the laptop which is a fixed asset in exchange for cash once we know which accounts are affected we need to now determine which accounts are increasing and which ones are decreasing most transactions benefit or increase the business's resources in one area and create a disadvantage or decrease business's resources in another area however a transaction does not always cause this effect a transaction may result in just increases or just decreases the three possible results are listed below the first scenario is where both the accounts affected are increasing for example when the owner of a business invests money in the business the transaction increases the company's cash and also increases the owner's equity the second scenario is where both the accounts are decreasing for example when the owner of the business withdraws money from the business for personal expenses the transaction decreases the cash and also decreases the owner's equity the third and the most common scenario is where one account increases and the other account decreases for example when you buy raw material for production the transaction increases the business's inventory but decreases its cash in any transaction one of these three scenarios exists let's go back to our transaction of laptop purchase we saw that the two accounts affected are the laptop account which is a fixed asset and the cash account which is also an asset account in this transaction the laptop account increases and the cash account decreases this is because the purchase of the laptop increases web design inks equipment resources but 800 dollars in cash must be given out let's look at a few more examples of which accounts are increasing and which ones are decreasing when david invests 10000 dollars in the business it increases both the owner's equity account and the cash account which is an asset account when he receives an advance of 1000 dollars the advance is received in cash at the same time since the service has not yet been delivered this will create a liability in the form of unearned revenue so on one side cash will increase and on the other side the liability will increase by 1000 dollars by now we know which accounts are affected by a transaction and whether the accounts are increasing or decreasing we need to convert this knowledge in the language of accounting accounting deals with specific terminology the most common being debit which means left and credit which means right for example debit the amount of rent means that the amount for rent is recorded on the left side the rule of debit and credit or double entry accounting states that transactions are recorded in two or more accounts where an amount is entered on the debit side and an equal amount is entered on the credit side the rule of debit and credit is a fundamental theory behind accounting procedures the practice of recording amounts on two sides is intended to minimize errors an informal way to show debits and credits is to create a t account t accounts display the title of the account the left side and the right side on the left side debits are recorded and on the right side credits are recorded this helps in ascertaining the ultimate position of each item at the end of the accounting period 
For example, if we were looking at the account of a vendor, all goods, materials supplied will appear on the right side or the credit side of the supplier's account and all payments made to him on the left side or the debit side. How does one know what should be debited and what should be credited? There are two fundamental rules that you need to memorize with respect to debits and credits. The first rule is for recording a transaction related to assets, expenses or losses. An increase in asset is debited and a decrease in asset is credited. Similarly, an increase in expense or loss is debited and a decrease in expense or loss is credited. I'll suggest that you make a note of these points on a piece of paper as it will be useful in the following slides. The second rule is for recording a transaction related to liabilities, capital revenues or gains. An increase in liabilities is credited and a decrease in liabilities is debited. An increase in capital is credited and a decrease in capital is debited. An increase in revenue is credited and a decrease in revenue is debited. Note that this is exactly the opposite of asset and expense accounts. In an asset or expense account, an increase is debited and a decrease is credited. However, in a liability or a revenue account, an increase is credited and a decrease is debited. If you can remember these simple rules, the rest of the accounting is just common sense. These two rules can also be represented on the T accounts as shown on screen. As you can see, for both the asset and expenses or losses accounts, an increase is debited and a decrease is credited. Similarly, for liabilities, capital and revenue or gain accounts, an increase is credited and a decrease is debited. Remember that each transaction affects two or more accounts. One T account represents one account. In the following screens, we will look at the transactions at Web Design Inc. and see how they are recorded in the T accounts. In the first transaction, David invests $10,000 in the business. The two accounts affected are cash and the capital account. Cash, which is an asset, has increased, so the cash account will be debited. Capital has also increased, so the capital account will be credited. In the second transaction, David purchases a laptop for $800. The two accounts affected are cash account and laptop account. The laptop has come in and the cash has gone out. So, the cash account will be credited and the laptop account is debited. In the third transaction, David receives an advance of $1,000. Cash has come in and there is a liability created in the form of unearned revenue. So the cash account will be debited and the unearned revenue account will be credited. In the same manner, all the transactions will be recorded in T accounts. Note that there will be one T account for each item and the various debits and credits will be recorded in a chronological order along with the dates. To view the T accounts for all the transactions at Web Design Inc, please refer to the document titled Case Study with Solution.